looking to pop some tags but got a limited budget it's not a thrift shop but if you want to lower your car the best thing to do when you're on a budget is go for lowering springs today we'll talk about it Hey guys, welcome back to another Talking Mods. Um, on today's subject is a subject that I think all of us have explored or are looking to explore at one point or another. And it makes a lot of sense. Um, lowering springs. Now, if you watch my videos, I'm always advocating for coilovers because I love it. I love having the proper shock, the full system. But that's not for everybody. There is a budget there. Now, at Mod Bargains, we cater towards everything. We carry all these springs I'm going to talk about. We carry some other ones. I'm only going to talk about the brands that um, I truly recommend and that I've curated. And they're usually the ones that are on our website. So um, only the ones that I think are good. There's a lot of other ones. You're welcome to put in the comments below if you want to. But guys, check out Mod Bargains for anything else that you need. It doesn't have to be just suspension. Our big thing is obviously, you know, wheels, tires, um, body kits, a lot of other awesome stuff that we do. But one of the big things when you get wheels and tires is, what ends up happening is that gap starts to form. And that gap actually doesn't change, but by optical illusion. So let's say you went from like a 17 inch wheel to a 19 inch wheel. People will say, oh, your car looks like it's going off-roading. Now, what happens is that gap becomes more noticeable because the wheel's bigger. The gap hasn't actually changed. So that's a big misunderstanding by a lot of people. So the gap just becomes more pronounced. So big misunderstanding by a lot of people there. But what ends up happening is everybody wants to fill in that gap, get it lower, and because it looks a lot better. There are some caveats of what happens when you do that. The number one thing when you're lowering springs is, well, at any time, it depends on how aggressive that spring is and how it's designed. If it's designed within the shock, the OEM shock, then it's going to be fine. But most of the time, aftermarket springs are not 100% designed for your stock shock. They may claim that they are, but they're going to wear down the life of that shock. So what does that mean? Typical shock life now depends on how you drive. You are hitting speed bumps all day long and you're driving like a maniac. Your shock life is going to wear down pretty quick if you're taking jumps and so forth, right? But average person, about 85,000 miles is usually the average. Now, depending on how aggressive, and I'll talk about it as I talk about the different brands, depending on how aggressive, that shock life can be worn down. So the shocks are valved to a certain spec. The springs have a certain um, you know, ratio that it's supposed to go, and it can get worn down, especially when it's aftermarket. So is it the right thing for you? If, you're, if you just leased your car and you're only leasing, yeah, by all means, you're probably turning it in. So you want to fill in that gap and enjoy it? I think the guys who are leasing... Springs make a lot of sense if they don't want to spend for coilovers. Now, coilovers are going to give you much better handling all across the board. Yes, lowering springs will lower your center of gravity, help you handle as well. But, again, the two things are different, but in a completely different price point. You know, most springs are going to be about three to four hundred, and I'll talk about it. About three to four hundred dollars, some are even less. Um, you know, if you go to our website, I think we have one of the most competitive prices. Again, I'm plugging it because this is our video, and I am the CEO of Mod Bargains, and that's why I plug it. But um, let's talk about the big brands, okay? The first one being H&R. And H&R is probably the most, one of the most popular ones that you can find out there. Made in Germany. Everything is TV. I've talked about TV before, which is the highest level of standard. Um, it surpasses anything we have in the US, surpasses Japan, Taiwan, all of them. Germany has the highest standard. So at all levels, it's tested um, for their springs. H&R um, is used widely on racetracks from their spacers to their springs. Um, they're widely used. Now H&R springs are at a nice price point. They'll usually be you know, under that $400 price point. Um, but above $200, about like above $240, $250, between that and $400. Now there are different springs and they're going to be the most aggressive usually in terms of drop. And what, what I mean by that is they'll give you about a, like a one and a half inch drop on the front and a, like a 1.2 on the rear in general. These are general. Every car is specific to itself. Remember that. And you can look it up on the website for your specific car. So H&R comes out with their sports springs. That's going to be their number one top seller. That's the one that we're going to recommend. Now H&R also has a super sports, which can be even more aggressive. 
And then they also have the H&R race rings, which can go down to two and a half inch, like on the front, way more aggressive on the front. I will never recommend that to you. I don't know anybody who has ever been happy. The most number of returns or attempted returns is gonna be on an H&R race. We try not to sell you the H&R race because they're extremely aggressive and they will blow out your shocks very, very quickly. They are literally designed for perfect roads that are nice and smooth and on the track. So stay away from the H&R race. Don't even think about it. I know you're thinking about the drop, but think about being able to actually drive. So if they're Pepsi or Coke, the opposite of, the, let's say they're Pepsi, the opposite is gonna be the Coke, Eibach. Eibach is the second biggest one in the marketplace. These two go head to head. Eibach also makes, um, you know, kits to raise and all that other stuff. H&R primarily focuses on lowering um, primarily only. So Eibach is going to be a much milder drop. Eibach factors in your stock shocks. It won't fill up the gap completely, which some people don't like, but it takes care of the gap halfway. So it's not a bad situation, pretty good. Also stuff is TUV, both H&R and Eibach, lifetime warranties, I've never seen them fail. They will last a lifetime of a vehicle past, honestly. Even if you buy them used, they are fantastic. And you always see them in the used market too because somebody will upgrade and go to a coilover. They're great if you're just starting out. There's an in-between that's often forgotten. And uh, Eibach is a major OEM supplier. H&R makes OEM supplying as well. There's a major OEM supplier that's right in between that's not big here in the U.S., but we do carry it here at Mod Bargains. It's a company called Vodlin. Now, they don't have much U.S. presence, so there's inventory is limited. Um, company's been around since 1908. Great spring. So, again, when you think about what springs are the right ones for me, it depends on what you're looking for. What are you trying to get? You want that complete sport? You're going to go H&R. You want to just fill in the gap as much as possible, and that's the most important thing? You're going to go H&R. You care about comfort, but you just want to lower it a little bit and you want to change that comfort, you're going to go Eibach. So you got different options. Some other brands that have come out, um, these are priced higher now, right? Um, it's called a Haas system um, or height adjustable systems. Um, I don't know if it's coined or trademarked, but it doesn't really matter. One company that I did the X3 um, video, if you saw that um, in our videos, I did that with the X3. We've done a couple videos already with them. MSS has been a newcomer in, in the marketplace. Not a really a newcomer in, in making springs, but one of the newer brands that we've picked up over the, the past couple of years. They are an adjustable spring. So what does that mean? That means that the spring can be adjusted um, to the right height that you want. So go as much as, as low as it's, it can possibly go, or you can raise it up accordingly. So you have that adjustability that you get with the coilover. And that's usually why a lot of people like coilovers. The nice thing with that MSS is that they're often building their springs for the shocks, meaning that they have multiple different rates at the different heights in order to compensate um, for the shocks that it's maximizing the shocks, um, how do we call it, sweet spot, you know, the way it's gonna properly respond and so forth. That sweet spot is what makes MSS so Good, and that's why MSS was used by Tesla's engineers. Tesla engineers went to, to MSS. That's why I've been a, such a big advocate for them because I think they make a great product that is actually really comfortable. Yes, you're gonna pay a little more. It's gonna cost you about 1300, I think, as a price point for the MSS springs, but you get right height adjustability. Sometimes they include bump stops. You get multiple different rates on it, um, and you get something that doesn't wear down your shock. So it really almost performs like a standard coilover for a much, uh, like a much less price, right? Now, the original guys who came out with the height adjustable springs was KW. They really knocked it out of the park. They have a lot of applications out there. Um, KW is obviously known for their coilovers. They make a great product. Um, they're not made in the same way as uh, the MSS with the multiple rates. So I think MSS has a leg up, but MSS just doesn't make for a lot of vehicles. Um, KW has a much bigger, bigger facility, bigger everything. Um, bigger companies, so they have a lot more springs available. Usually you'll see the Haas systems available for more of the higher end vehicles. Um, price points equivalent to the MSS. Great product, made in Germany, TUV approved, awesome. Now, all of these springs that I've talked about are progressive. So they're all progressive springs. I talked about it in the video, the difference between linear and progressive, but I'll explain it one more time in the simplest manner. Progressive springs basically progress just as it sounds right it changes according to as the ride changes and hopefully has a different rate accordingly right so it should have different rates 
besides the, the rates that are set. So there's set rates. Set rates, as in the, the, the spring itself, as in one single rate, would be a linear spring. So a linear spring has one specific setting on the rates, and that's going to be something that makes it very predictable if the road is predictable. Keep in mind, if the road is predictable. So if we were driving on the track and we knew the conditions and we know how the car wants to handle, we can set the rate of the spring specifically for it, aka Swift Springs. Swift Springs is a great brand for linear springs, but again, this is something that you want to use on the track, not something that when you're driving on the road, the road has tons of imperfections, you don't want to use a Swift Spring. It's not going to perform as well because it's not changing the rates. It's not progressive. It's not changing accordingly. So in the simplest manner, I gave you guys a, hopefully a different example. Guys, I know there's some other springs. I know there's some questions, so feel free to drop them down below, help each other out. Um, I'll try to chime in there. Guys, let me know what you guys think. As always, please hit the subscribe and like or share. Um, somebody who's trying to learn about this product, you know, deciding between springs or not, or going to go to coilovers. We're happy to help. Give us a call. And guys, I will see you on the next one.